Well, you've done it now. You've lost that drone. And how are you going to find it? Well, hopefully it hasn't actually happened to you yet and you're watching this video ahead of time. You know, it's likely to happen to almost all of us at one point or another. It happened to me and I wasn't prepared. And that's exactly why I've made this video and a previous one to tell you how to find your drone. If I had seen these videos before I lost my drone, I probably would have been able to find it quicker and with more confidence, less sweating. Well, I'm Scott Law, the world's oldest vlogger. Let's roll that intro. If you check down in the description below, you'll see some links to my first video where I lost my drone. Also, you'll see a link to the first a uh, video on recovering your drone where I use find my drone feature. In this video I'll give you some additional options to help and uh, I'll teach you some cool info that's uh, available to you that you probably don't even know about. Now remember I'm a DJI guy. I don't know much about the other the other brands that are available but if you've got a good quality drone likely you'll be able to learn something about uh, how to help find your drone. I've even got in here some additional universal type apps that may be very helpful for you. The truth is that if you have the Find My Drone app available and working, that is probably the first place you'll turn. But it's sure nice to have some alternatives to get the information you need at the time. What kind of information are you looking for? First and foremost, you need to know as much as possible about the exact location. This video is only going to help if you still had communications when the drone ended its flight. If you have a flyaway or interference that prevented you from getting the data on the location of your drone, then hopefully you had some aftermarket GPS or other locating device. This is beyond the scope of this video. The two things you are looking for to get the exact location are one, the precise grid location or coordinates or spot on the face of the earth and two, what is the drone seeing? That will tell you if it is hanging in a tree, upside down in the grass, in the middle of the street or whatever. When you first discover your drone is down, don't panic. Stop. Breathe. Look at your screen to see what this drone camera is seeing. If it is still recording video, tap the record button to stop the recording and save battery. If it is not recording a video, either start and stop the recording or take a still image of what it is seeing. You may even have to go back and review the last few seconds of video to see what it was seeing. This may be something you want to refer back to when you have calmed down. Every drone that has built-in GPS knows where it is on the face of the earth at all times once it has linked up with the satellites, which is why it is so important to make sure you have linked to several satellites 10 or more is usually recommended, before you take off. There are also aftermarket products available you can stick on your quad with their own separate method of locating them, which you may want if you are afraid you may have a flyaway or otherwise lose your drone beyond the tracking system that is built in and communicating with your controller. I guess whether you need that type of product depends on how expensive your copter is and how you use it, but it's certainly worth a little investigation. For this video, I'm going to stick to the built-in tracking system. As I said before, the first thing you're likely to turn to is the Find My Drone app. But if for some reason that does not solve your problem, you'll want to turn to the flight record that was automatically rec recorded in your device. 
In just a few minutes, I will show you how to use the Flight Record app. But first, I want to give you some other tips and hints to help you be thoroughly prepared. So, there are a couple things I'm going to have you install on your devices before you head out on your next flight. You know, it's important that you have some good mapping in your device. If you don't already have Google Maps, you can download that for free and should do so right away. If you're like me and find yourself t uh, taking your drone out into the wild and away from cities very much, I would also recommend an app like Backcountry Navigator. There is a demo version which is free, but the pro version is well worth the 10 or 15 bucks or whatever it costs. There are other mapping software apps available for free also, so check them out. As a reminder, I'm not familiar with iPhone or iPad apps, but I know Google Maps is available on the Apple products, and I believe the Backcountry Navigator was recently re released for them. But if not, there are certainly other excellent mapping apps available for the iDevices. The important thing is to have a couple of good GPS mapping programs on your device. One more thing, and this is key. Your DJI app and Google Maps and Backcountry Navigator all allow you to download maps for use when you're offline. If you find another program that you would rather use, make sure that it gives you the capability to download and store maps when you are offline. Then, unless you're certain that you will be where you have internet access, whether by Wi-Fi or your device data service, make sure you download the maps of the area you'll be flying in using the app that will access the map. That may mean you have two or three or even more copies of the area, which will take up some space, but you can always delete them later when you don't need them anymore. Google Maps even automatically deletes it after so many days. Incidentally, Google Earth may seem like a great option, but it is only useful where you have internet access because you can't download maps for offline use and you can't save places using your device. Let me know in the comments what mapping software you have found that works for you. I don't know if you know it already, but every single time you fly, all the information about your flight is recorded right in your device. That's really helpful information for you, and if you'll watch for a minute, I'm going to show you where that information is, how to access it, and most importantly, how it's going to help you find your drone. A really handy tool that you have built into your uh, DJI Go 4 app already is the flight record. It actually records every single flight that you take. If you don't know how to get to that, you go up here to these three uh, ver uh, horizontal bars up in the upper right hand corner and tap on that. This opens a new menu and you go down here to the third one, uh, whichever one, if, if, if it's different on your uh, device it may be, but you look, tap on flight record and this pops up this. Now over here on the left it gives you your experience points. That has nothing to do with finding your drone at this time, but just so, for your information. And I, I wonder, do you get extra extra experience points when you crash your drone? Anyway, and so here's your list of uh, recent flights. Obviously, you would go to your very last flight because you're looking for your drone. That's what the purpose of this video is about. And so we would hit the very last one. I'm not going to hit the very last one because on the very last one, I was doing some still images and so I hardly moved the drone at all. I'm going to go to the second one down to show you as an example because it's a little more interesting. So let's go uh, across the top here. You see several things. Now first it's going to start with downloading the map. And uh, if you have your map downloaded then um, and you're away from internet service then you it's just going to show you the downloaded map and I'll give you a little more details on that in a moment and then uh, it's going to show you your travel distance your time that you were up your height your distance obviously none of this really matters 
uh, for when you're trying to find your drone. But I'm giving it to you as an interesting point. Shows you up here at the top how many GPS satellites are linked in and your battery power. Now we're going to go down here to the control panel. First of all, you see that your little drone, in this particular case, the drone is clear off here in the right corner. And I don't know why it's there, but we want to center it. So uh, if you see on this control panel, there in the bottom, that thing that looks like uh, maybe a rifle scope or something, tap on that and boom, it goes right to the center. Now you can take your fingers and squeeze in and zoom out so that you see more of the surrounding area and you see uh, the total path in that little thing that looks like a fishing line. Uh, you see the total path that you made on this particular flight that you did. So you can zoom in and zoom out simply by doing the pinch finger deal. This next little button here shows you what's your remote control. So I'm going to go ahead and start it by hitting the play button here in the center of the control panel. And uh, we're going to watch it for a second. Now uh, here on the right hand side, you or to the right of the play button, which is now the pause button, uh, you can change the speed. You can watch it at two times. You can watch it at four times. You can watch it at eight times or back to one times. Let's just do it at two times. And so uh, you can see that the things are changing. If you go up to the top, the data is changing. The height has changed. The distance has changed. All that's changed. Now, as it goes along, if you look at these two panels over here, they will show you where the joystick uh was and right now there's no movement at all so let's advance a little bit now it's showing that i'm creeping forward you just barely see that little bit of a blue area there uh see how that one i was moving forward much faster and uh but i was staying pretty level okay now i'm dropping down a little bit with the left joystick not that that matters for finding your drone but it just thought you you might see it as interesting uh Another inch, and then of course the the one to the far right here with the square with the arrow pointing out of it is to share. Another very very important feature that you want to know about on this control panel is these this set of numbers that's right above the blue line here. In this case, it says forty four point six seven seven blah blah blah, blah and then negative one sixteen point oh six. Now it's very important that you notice that negative. If that negative isn't there, then it's a positive, and that's going to be a completely different place in the world if you go to positive 116 or negative 116. So be sure you note that. Uh, and, and maybe we'll talk a little bit more about grid coordinates in, in a minute. But anyway, what you want to do if you're trying to find your drone is you want to take your this white dot and slide it all the way over to the right. Come on, there we go. Uh, so that it tells you the end of your flight. We can turn these remote control things off and then zoom in and tight. And it's going to show you, going to show you where your drone is. And if you look up the top, it says, hey, it's 65 feet from the home. So if you're standing there at the home, you know, oh, it's only 65 feet from me. So where could it be? And so you got a 65 foot loop around you. Now, it might not be 65 feet, obviously it might be 200 feet or, or, or 2,000 feet. But uh, the, the net result is it's going to show you how, how far away it is from you and it's going to give you this grid coordinate. And remember, at any time you uh, want, you can hit that uh, target button there, not target, but scope button again, the lower left, and it'll bring that plane back into it. So that is how you can use the uh, flight record feature on here to help find your drone and also how you can enjoy the flight record to kind of get a picture of what you did and how you did it uh, and so if you made some uh, things that you want to change you can take a look at this record and say okay now how should i have done this differently so there you go that tells you about your flight record enjoy well, I hope that was helpful to you. However, you got to realize that all you know now is how to find the grid location of your drone. You don't yet know where you are. 
and that's where the other map apps are going to come into play. And so I'm going to take a few minutes and show you how to use the uh, Google Maps app so that you know both where the drone is and where you are and that's going to help you get right to where you want to be. Now other map applications are going to have the same basic idea and concept although it'll just be a different uh, interface. So hopefully this Google Maps tutorial that I'll give you here will help you find that drone. So we're going to open Google Maps here and uh, find out where our drone is based on what we just found from the flight record. Now obviously I'm just using a made-up location. Uh, my drone isn't really there, but that doesn't matter because your drone won't really be there either. You need to use the, the numbers that you've got. Up here where it says try gas stations and ATMs, I'm going to tap in there and that's going to give me a place to enter information. My keyboard came up as letters uh, with some numbers at the top, but I'm going to change it to numbers because we're going to be entering numbers. Now, it's very, very important that you enter these numbers very correctly because one number off could put you, you know, anywhere from a few feet to a few hundred miles or even thousand miles uh, off. So important that you enter it correctly. So the one I've got picked out here is 41 dot one two two six two five and then you're going to hit a comma and a space and when you hit the space bar it goes back to letters so we'll go back to the numbers and then in my case when I pull this up it was a negative or a minus sign in front of the next numbers and if you're in the United States or Canada someplace like that and see what I just entered was the underscore. I want to hit the minus. Uh, it's likely that it's going to be a minus sign. So one, one, two, dot, zero, nine, seven, two, one, three. Then I'm going to go over here to this on the right side, that little blue magnifying glass is your search symbol. You're going to hit that and bingo, there you are. Now this next thing is very important on Google Maps because if you touch anything else, you may lose that location. So the first thing you want to do is you want to hit the save button over here on the left side. Uh, I've got my arrow pointing there towards it. You want to save it. I'm going to save it to starred places. Uh, we'll just right there. Click on and put a check mark in there and hit done. And now it's saved there. Now, interestingly, it uses a different format for the grid coordinates, but that doesn't matter. Both formats take us to exactly the same place. I'm going to clean up some uh, real estate here on the screen by clicking those, and then I'm going to zoom in. And there we are, the blue star, or blue dot, excuse me, uh, our spot is where I am, and the uh, yellow pin with the star in it is where I have tagged as, as a possible place for my drone right now. So now I'm going to, as you start walking towards it, what's going to happen? I'm, I'm actually in my car to cut down on background noise. So I'm getting out of my car and walking towards the item and you will see towards that grid point that the star is at and you will see that uh, the blue star or the blue dot is moving quite slowly but it is moving it is getting me closer to the, uh, to where the drone is and I happen to know where I pegged it so I know which direction to go. You may have to do a little bit of experimentation and see if the blue dot is moving towards the arrow or if you're headed in the wrong direction. Just keep a good eye on it, see if you're getting closer or if you're getting farther away. So now you know where you are, you know where the drone is based on the grid coordinates and You've got it made. You're on your way. 
Well, you just learned how to use the Google Maps app in finding your drone, and I hope that that was helpful to you. Uh, if you're using a different one or if you have alternates so that you have more than one, practice with those and with Google Maps so that you know what you're doing when you get out there in uh, real life. Now, I've got a couple of final tips for you. One is get a good screen recorder. I use AZ Screen Recorder, which has worked well for me, but doesn't mean anything. Another Another one that I've heard good things about is MobaZen, and there's probably six or seven or twelve other ones out there that would work for you. And then screen record every flight. Also, make sure that you're caching your videos and your stills on your device in case you don't have the, the drone to refer back to at some future time. You will have the video cached on your device. Well, I hope this has been good information for you, and I hope you never have to use it, but don't count on it. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button down there. Give me a like. Also, if you want to get notified for future videos that are coming up, and you never know where it's going to be on photography, there's going to be on drones, there's going to be travel and fun places to go and see, and who knows what else you might see on my channel. So hit that uh, bell so that you get notified on all of them. Remember, I do read every single comment that comes through and respond to those that need a, need a response. So tell me about your experiences, tell me your ideas, tell me your suggestions, tell me what you didn't like and how I can improve. Meanwhile, this is Scott Law, the world's oldest vlogger, and I hope to see you on the next video.